Hi, welcome back to the course Foundations for Machine Learning. We are continuing to learn mathematical foundations for machine learning and that is linear algebra. In this lecture, we will look at how dot product relates with linear transformation. In all the past lectures, we have been learning about linear transformations, how matrix multiplication is a linear transformation, how you can use uh, matrix to matrix multiplication as a composite linear transformation, and how we can use matrix to vector multiplication as a linear transformation of a vector, etc. Uh, and today, specifically, we'll be looking at dot products. So we know dot products numerically. If this is one vector, uh, in our notation, whenever we see one column, it's a vector. If it's one row or if it's like a matrix, it's a, it's a transformation. So here you have two vectors, 1, 2, 3 and 3, 2, 1. And the dot product, you know how to calculate. 1 times 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1. Uh, in this case, it's 3 plus 4 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10. So the result of this dot product numerically is a scalar. So dot product takes two vectors and it converts it, to, it into a scalar. We have, we also know that dot product is nothing but projection of one vector onto another. So if in the 2D space you have a vector u and vector v, you can think of dot product as first taking a projection of u onto v, let's say something, uh, I mean v onto u. So the projection of v on u is this part and then multiplying that, whatever is the length of that with u and converting that into a number. But we also know that this uh, also works in the other way. You can, instead of taking the projection of V onto U, you can also take the projection of U onto V. So you will get this and then multiply that, whatever is that length with V and take the scalar value, the, the magnitude of the resulting uh, number. So we know that you can project V onto U or U onto V for this purpose. But why does the order of projection does not matter? Have you thought about that? Why do you think if you take u onto v or u, uh, v onto u, why does it not matter geometrically? Mathematically, it's easy to show. But geometrically, why does this not matter? We can think of it like this. Consider two vectors u and v and think that they both have the same length. But they are pointing in two different directions like this. But they have the same length. So there is a great deal of symmetry here and you can draw a line exactly between those two vectors like, like this. So you can think of uh, v, v as something that is to the right side of the line and U as something to the left side of the line by equal angles. So here in this case, it's easy to understand why the projection of U onto the V and V onto U have the same magnitude because there is great deal of symmetry here. So this is easy to understand. But what if there is no symmetry? So this case is trivial in the sense that geometrically understanding why u dot v and v dot u might be same, at least the projection, why the projection value might be same in this case is easy to understand. But what if the vector v was doubling it in its length? So now it's 2v. In this case, if you take the projection of u onto 2v, the length of the projection is exactly same as the projection of u onto v. So if this is the length of the projection here, if this is the length, this length is exactly same as taking the projection of u onto 2v. And to get the dot product, we are basically multiplying the length of this projection by the mag magnitude of 2v itself. So in this case, we can write u is projected onto 2v. So it is u dot 2v. And this should be exactly same as u dot v multiplied by 2 because whatever the projection of u onto v that we also have here but then the only difference is that v has doubled in its magnitude so we have a factor 2 here so ultimately u projected onto 2v and then finding the dot product is exactly same as taking double the value of whatever was the projection of u onto v and finding the dot product of that now let's take the opposite case what if here 2v is projected onto u? So we can draw a line that passes, that passes through u like this, this dotted line. And when you project 2v onto u, you have a certain magnitude. And 
This magnitude gets multiplied by whatever was the value of u and the value of u has not changed. It is same in, in the previous case as well as in this case. So in this case, projection is getting scaled by a factor of 2 because the projection of v onto u was only this much. So if this was v, the projection of v onto u was something like this, this, this length. But projection of 2v onto u has doubled the length. So in this case, you are not changing u, but you are changing the projection. In the previous case, both are the, exactly the same, but we are looking at the dot product from both angles, projection of u onto v or v onto u. But in this case, we are projecting to, uh, u onto v to v, which means the projection length has not changed, but the vector onto which you are projecting, the length of that has doubled. In the next case, projection has doubled, the vector onto which you are projecting has not not changed in length. So here you can write the projection as projection of 2v onto u and taking the dot product, which is same as again taking 2 times v dot u because uh, u is the same, but the projection's length has doubled. So that is the factor 2 here. So at the end of the day, whether you project u onto v or v onto u, you get the same thing. So 2v dot u is same as u dot 2v. It is the same as twice u dot v it is the same as twice v dot u. So this is the, the, the way in which you can geometrically think of this. Numerically, is much, it's much, much more easier because if uh, let's say u is 1, 2 and v is 3, 4, then u dot v is nothing but uh, 1 times 3 plus 2 times 4, which is 3 plus 8, 11. And v dot u is 3, 4 dot 1, 2 which is same as uh, 3 plus 8, 11. So here we can easily show, prove that v dot, v dot u is same as u dot v numerically, but geometrically what we just discussed is the reason. All right, all of this is fine. Now there is a question, how is this dot product directly related to projection idea? Because the numerical dot product is easy to calculate, but it's difficult to visualize. Can we visualize this in the terms of projection? Because we discussed that dot product is essentially a projection. Can we visualize this numerical uh, pro dot product as a projection? So this is where linear transformation basically comes. So in this lecture, the essence of this lecture is nothing but visualizing dot product in terms of linear transformation. This in this entire linear algebra module itself, we have been trying to visualize various trans, various, uh, you know, matrix to matrix multiplication, matrix to vector multiplication, etc. as linear transformations. But today, we are trying to visualize a dot product between two vectors as a linear transformation. So consider a linear transformation from a 2D XY plane into a 1D line. You know the dimension of the matrix that makes it happen. So first of all, what is linear transformation? Linear transformation is multiplying a vector by a matrix such that the result is also another vector. The dimension of the resulting vector can increase, it can decrease depending on the type of transformation. And uh, the result is a vector itself. The result is not a scalar. After transformation of a vector, you get another vector, not a scalar. So now, how is this related to dot product? So let's consider this linear transformation from 2D to 1D. We know that if the transformation is from 2D to 1D, the resultant, the, the matrix which does this transformation has to have a dimension which is like 1 by 2. Because if this 1 by 2 matrix is multiplied by a 2 by 1 vector, that is when you have a result, result as another vector whose dimension is 1 by 1. And this is 1D. But this matrix I mean, this uh, vector is 2D, which is transformed into 1D using this matrix of dimension 1 by 2. So now if you consider this transformation matrix M, 2 minus 1, 2 is the location where I lands, where the unit vector I lands after transformation. Minus 1 is the location where unit vector J lands after transformation. And the vector V, which does the transformation is 3, 4. Which, which, which is being transformed is 3, 4 in this case, let's say. So 3 is the scaling factor. So here vector V itself can be written as 3 times I plus 4 times J. So 3 is the scaling factor of I and 4 is the scaling factor of J. And the transformed V, we have discussed this in the previous lecture also. 
the transformed V is nothing but the same scaling factor 3 multiplied by I transformed. Uh, this won't be a unit vector, so let me not put a cap. Let, let me write it as a normal vector. Then uh, it, uh, the same um, scaling factor here, 3 times I transformed plus 4 times J transformed. And that is what I have written here. Now, what is the transformed I? Transformed I will be having this uh, 2 as a scaling factor and along X direction. That's why I have put I cap here. And along J, the minus 1 is the transformed uh, J vector. So, J after transformation becomes minus 1 I. Why have I put here minus 1 I instead of minus 1 J? Because here the vectors have only one dimension. Vectors do not, after transformation using this matrix M, the vectors do not have two dimensions. You have one dimensional, uh, trans you have a 2D to 1D transformation. So, I is the only unit vector, only basis vector, I mean only basis unit vector that uh, we primarily use. J is not there. So, the result here is 2I. But please note that this transformation, the result of this transformation is a vector. It's not a scalar, right? Okay. So, this is how we visualize linear transformation from 2D to 1D. Now, here is the question and uh, this is this is very interesting. This matrix ve vector multiplication, which was the transformation of a vector into another vector, is there a nice way to correlate this with dot product with, between a vector and another vector? I mean, of course, I understand that we know we know that dot product is a scalar. The result of a dot product between vector and vector is scalar. But matrix vector multiplication is vector transformation, which means the result is another vector. But still, is there a nice way to correlate this, this, these two? What, which two? The matrix vector multiplication and vector vector dot product. Can we correlate these two? Let's think about it, right? So let's say we want to do a dot product between two vectors u and v. Um, so how do we do that? You take the projection of u onto v, right? We can actually, uh, so think about a line that passes through the vector v. This line we can think of as the one dimensional line to which linear transformations from 2D is happening to. So there exists some matrix which performs a linear transformation from 2D to 1D where 2D is the normal xy plane, this one x and y and 1D is this particular line. Can we think of what that transformation is? So that is, I have written here uh, two questions. Can we represent the line that passes through V as a linear transformation from 2D to 1D line, 2D space to 1D line, right? This is the first question. Second is, is there a projection matrix which is equivalent to transformation matrix which makes U, U is here, which makes U land on V. So what do I mean by projection matrix? So in transformation matrix, we have learned that there are many different transformations. There is rot rotation transformation, there is shearing transformation, there is scaling up, there is squishing down, which is scaling down. There are many different transformations and there are composite transformations where the same transformation will squish, uh, will uh, shear uh, the entire 2D space. It will also expand the 2D space or it can shear and rotate the 2D space. In this particular case, we are discussing about one particular transformation called projection transformation. What should this transformation do? It should transform every single vector in the, in the 2D plane, in this particular case, into a one-dimensional vector along this line, such that if this is the vector, if this dotted line represents a vector, it should get projected onto the this 1D line along vector V like this. And the result will not be this dot scalar, result will be a vector. I have just uh, drawn the dot here to show the tip of the vector. The result will be a vector along this line whose tip is this dot. If you take another vector, it will have a projection over here as well. And the projection is such that the tip is this. Can we define a matrix which represents this linear transformation? So that is what we are trying to do. So what I have written here, this question, the second question, can we find the transformation matrix, which I also call as projection matrix in this particular case, can we find that matrix that makes U land onto V? So basically, it's a transformation that is applied to U such that U gets transformed onto the V vector. So this projection matrix 
if we can identify, I think we have a good answer to how linear transformation relates to dot product. So let's think of what this projection matrix might be. What, what can this projection matrix diamond, uh, individual element should be? So first of all, let's think of the dimensions of this projection matrix. Obviously, it has to be one by two. Because if you are transforming something from 2D into 1D, in this case, you want to transform everything from the 2D space into that 1D line. So the, the dimensions of the projection matrix, of course, has to be one by two. And since it has two elements, the first element, which is unknown at the moment, is where I, I, I cap lands after transformation. So this is where unit vector I lands after transformation. The second element is where unit vector J lands after transformation. Now, where does unit vector I and unit vector J land after transformation? Let's look at it. So unit vector I, we can, we can draw over here and unit vector J is this, let's say. So this is I and this is J. And what, what exactly is the transformation here? Is it rotation? Is it shearing? Is it scaling up? No. The transformation here is a projection transformation. So unit vector i get transformed into this vector. So this is the transformed unit vector. Trans, uh, this is unit vector i at after transformation. After transformation, it won't necessarily be a unit vector. It will be uh, of different size. Then what happens to unit vector j after transformation? You take uh, here the transformation is projection. So you take the projection onto this vector v. So this is what happens to unit vector j after transformation. Now, can we describe this in terms of the vector v itself? Because if i is if is if i is being projected onto v, now in this case v we can assume that v is sort of like a unit vector, okay? So for ease of understanding, so v is a unit vector whose magnitude is one along this line. Of course, the most general case is u is a non-unit vector, v is also a non-unit vector. But for ease of understanding, let's take u, v as a unit vector. Which means if v is a unit vector in this direction and i is a unit vector in this direction, taking a projection of i onto v is exactly same as taking a projection of v onto u, uh, v onto i, which is this, like this. So the length, this length is exactly same as this length. Similarly, since the magnitude of j and v are the same, we uh, let's assume v as a unit vector, taking a projection of j onto v, which is this, this length, let me choose a different color, this length is same as taking a projection of v onto j, which is this length. And what is this? This is the x, this is the y coordinate of v, v y. And what is this? This is the x coordinate. This is the x coordinate of v, v x. So the elements of the projection vector is nothing but v x and v y because after projection where i lands is exactly same as projection of v on i, which is v x. And after projection where j lands is exactly same as projection of v on j, which is v y. So the projection matrix, which I can call for now as P is nothing but v x, v y. So this is a one by two matrix. Now, what happens to our vector u after undergoing the transformation using this matrix P? It's nothing but P u. So this is a matrix matrix vector multiplication, P multiplied by u. Uh, it's nothing but V x V y, which is the matrix one by two matrix multiplied by U x U y. This is the two by one vector. And the result of this is nothing but V x U x plus V y U y. Is this a scalar? No, this is a vector. So I have to write this in bracket. And this is a one by one, one dimensional vector. Now, if you had a dot product, numerical dot product between the vector V and uh, between the vector U, how would you do it? You would do it like this. This is V X V Y. Now this time V, this is a vector V, one by two is the uh, dimension. And this is vector U. And here also the dimension is one by two, actually two by one, I'm sorry. Uh, the dimension is two by one. Uh, and these two are vectors. And here we are taking the dot product of these two vectors. And the result is Vx times Ux plus Vy times Uy. But this is a scalar. This is not a vector. However, you can already see what is the relationship between linear uh, thinking of dot product as a linear transformation versus thinking of dot product as a numerical dot product. 
because the the numerical value of this vector or the magnitude of this one dimensional vector after transformation is exactly same as what you get numerically after the dot product it's vx ux plus vy ui here also it's vx ux plus vy ui this is how you visualize a uh, dot product of between two vectors as a linear transformation now let's let's look at dot product uh, of any random vector u with a unit vector v right so this maybe i can write as v instead of u so that it's less confusing so let's say this v is a unit vector just like how we saw before and now u is this the dot product between u and v is nothing but converting u using a projection transformation on to the span of v do you understand what what i mean by that so v is this what is the span of v span of v is all possible vectors or all the all possible points in space that that can be accessed by a linear by scaling the v up or down because in this uh, if u is if v is the only vector that you have available then you can only span a one dimensional line like this so this entire line is the span of this vector v and what are we doing here we are taking a projection of u onto the span of v because this line is the span of v and we are taking a projection of u onto that and whatever is the magnitude of that projection that itself is the uh, value uh, is, is the value uh, magnitude of the projection uh, and whatever is the magnet uh, i'm sorry I, I just repeated what i said but uh, whatever is the magnitude of this projection is the projection transformation of vector u and if v is a unit vector the dot product itself is this but what if v is not a unit vector what if v instead of this being a, a unit value what if this was 2v whose magnitude is two times that of v in that in that case also the projection of u onto the span of 2v remains the same however this gets multiplied uh, by the factor 2 the scaling factor 2 of the unit vector so that is why you first find the projection then you multiply the value of the magnitude of that projection with whatever is the magnitude of the vector onto which you are projecting or the span of the vector onto which you are projecting so here the vector is 2v who has a magnitude of 2 because we are saying v has a magnitude of 1 and the span is a straight line which passes through the 2v and the magnitude of this 2v vector is 2 and you are multiplying that magnitude with whatever is the magnitude of the projection of u onto the span of 2v and that that magnitude is to this this magnitude of projection so uh let's recap what we learned so far in this lecture it is incorrect to say that dot product between u and v is exactly same as a linear transformation because dot product provides a scalar as the output linear transformation provides a vector as the output but um what we saw from this lecture is if whenever we have a 2d to 1d linear transformation let's say we represent that linear transformation by something like this ux v uh, uy right now this is a matrix that does a linear transformation this is not a vector because the dimension here is 1 by 2 now for every such transformation for every 2d to 1d linear transformation there is a corresponding two dimensional vector it has x and y dimension right so here there is a corresponding two dimensional vector whose elements are exactly same as the elements of this linear transformation so this is ux uy itself but uh, along a column where the numerical output of the linear transformation which we saw here the numerical output of the linear transformation was vx ux plus vy uy that is exactly same as the dot product of the vector v which is vx vy along a column with the vector u which is ux uy along a column so for every 2d to 1d linear transformation there exists a vector which looks like the transpose of the linear transformation in this particular case and uh, the value of the linear transformation the magnitude of the linear transformation at the end of it it's a 1d vector but the magnitude of that will be exactly same as the dot product between uh, this u and this v so this is how you visualize or you understand dot product also as essentially like a 
linear transformation. It is technically not a linear transformation, but numerically what you get after the linear transformation and what you get after the dot product is exactly the same. So just to recap what we, what all we learned so far in the course, we learned that a matrix is simply a representation of a linear transformation. So when you multiply a vector with a matrix, you are transforming the vector. Depending on the dimensions of the matrix, you are transforming the vector from the same space into uh, within the same space. Or sometimes you change the dimensionality of the space. You move from a 3D space into a 2D plane. Sometimes you move from 3D space into 1D line or sometimes from 3D space into zero dimensional, just a point. And um, we also learned that if you are multiplying a matrix with another matrix, that is essentially like a composite linear transformation. So you can have a matrix that represents a rotation transformation. You can have another matrix that represents um, shearing transformation. And if you multiply these two matrices, the resultant matrix is nothing but these two transformation applied one after the other. And in this lecture, we also learned that the inverse of a matrix is nothing but another matrix. So you can define inverse of a matrix as another linear transformation, which, which can kind of undo whatever the original linear transformation could do. So if there is a matrix that defines 90 degree counterclockwise rotation transformation, there is another matrix that can define 90 degree clockwise rotation transformation. So multiplying these two matrices, will perform a 90 degree counterclockwise and 90 degree clockwise rotation. We know that this composite transformation results in no change. And what is the matrix that corresponds to no change? It is the identity matrix. So all these things we learned. And in this lecture, what we learned is that, in fact, dot product also, which is ultimately resulting in a scalar, can also be visualized as the uh, like a linear transformation. It is not a linear transformation technically because of the the vector nature of the output of the linear transformation but yet we can visualize uh, or we can numerically uh, compare whatever the output of 2d to 1d linear transformation is with that of a uh, dot product as mentioned here so i hope this gives gives you a fairly good geometric idea about uh, several concepts involved in linear algebra like span basis linear transformation matrix multiplication dot product matrix to vector multiplication matrix to matrix multiplication inverse determinants, etc. So in the next lecture, we'll be looking at another very important concept uh, within linear algebra, uh, basically eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So see you until then, uh, take care. And I also want to take a moment to congratulate you for con uh, you know finishing this course uh, until this point. Uh, if you have finished so far, I'm sure you have been enjoying the lectures and you have come a long way. And we are very close to finishing the linear algebra part of the mathematical foundations for machine learning dot products you will frequently come across in machine learning just like how we will come across uh, linear transformations like matrix to vector multiplication dot product is equally important so uh, uh, you can brace yourself uh, and uh, we are you are we are very very close to wrapping up all the fundamentals uh, in terms of linear algebra for machine learning <clears throat> after after we finish linear algebra we will be moving on to some programming fundamentals as well as uh, some uh, things like optimization and a little bit about the overall what the landscape of uh, AIML look like today. So with that, let's wrap up the lecture. Thank you so much and see you soon.